Welcome to MOOC lectures on strategy and introduction to game theory. In this module, I am going to discuss game tree and information sets. But before we do that, I just want to recap what we did in the earlier module. In the earlier module, we introduced the concept of extensive form game. We said that in any strategic interaction that we need to typically we need to describe five things the list of players also when does a player get to move and what would be his move and next how much does that player know when he has an opportunity to move make a move in that game and the payoffs and then we said that of course in strategic form game or normal form game that we also use to model strategic interaction, but it is kind of a reduced form in which we ignore the order of the move of the game and also how much players know about whatever has happened in the past. But in the strat in the extensive form game, we explicitly model these things also. So, and we said that the game tree is the best way to represent an extensive form game. And basically, we said that game tree is made of nodes and branches. Basically, it is a graph and nodes, they represent basically one of the three things. Game tree as we talked about is in the last module that it is basically a graph which is made of nodes as well as branches and there are three different kinds of nodes initial nodes decision nodes and terminal nodes and branches they indicate the action taken at at the node now let us say that so far we have been talking about the decision makers as players but we have not tackled uncertainty in these strategic interactions. Let us take an example that it may very well happen like in the earlier entry game what we talked about that there is an entret which can enter or which can decide to remain out of the game. And if incumbent enters in the game then incumbent would either fight or accommodate the incumbent. And we say that in case of incumbent fights with the entrant either by going for advertisement or price cut for whatever the reason, then the payoffs are written here. Let us consider a scenario in which payoff after incumbent decides to fight is not certain. It depends on some random event. It may depend on government policies that there can be two different kind of government policies. One for example, is conducive for incumbents business, another which is conducive for entrants business. So, how can we model such things? For that, what we simply can say that as we can assume that government is not participating in this strategic interaction in a strategic manner. Government is deciding its parameter based on some other factors. So, we can say that for these two players, those two factors would generate some sort of random possibilities and one of them would happen that they and the intent or the incumbent would have no control over which one would happen. So, we can say that okay, here is another just the extension of that graph, here is intent, intent decides to enter or remain out and then here you have incumbent, I am writing in sort i and incumbent decides to fight or accommodate, but if incumbent decides to fight it depends on government policy. So, we can introduce nature, nature represents that chance that one of the one of the thing may happen. What these players intent or incumbent what do they need to know? They need to know the probability associated with those chances. So, let us say with probability sorry with probability half with probability half outcome is minus 2 comma 1 with probability remaining half the outcome is 0 comma 1. 
So, what we are doing here we are introducing nature to model this uncertainty in strategic interaction. What we have to keep in mind that this nature is not a strategic player, but nature is basically there just to figure out or to model the randomness in this strategic interaction. You can also think of a joint project in which there are two players, both are farmers and the outcome depends on whether they work hard or they do not work hard, but also it depends on the climate, whether the you had sufficient rain or not. So, all those things can be modeled using nature. Nature would be that player who would randomly decide that which of the outcome is going to which of the things going to happen. So, we will also consider nature in these games. So, what we have seen so far that a nodes, node represents one of the three things, either it represents the beginning of the game or it represents a player's turn to make a decision and it may also represent in some cases the end of the game. And what we are saying, this is initial node, this is decision node and this is terminal node. What we can say here, now nature can also start the game, nature action whether it is going to be sunny or it is going to be rainy, it nature would decide in the beginning and then the game would move on. So, in the beginning either a player can start the strategic interaction or nature can start the strategic interaction. What do we have next? Then we have branch, each branch always indicates an action taken by one of the players. Based on these two things, we can also define something called predecessor node or and successor nodes. And we will also, we should discuss the special case of predecessor node that is immediate predecessor node and also a special case of successor node that is immediate successor node. So, what do we mean by successor node? Let us take a node, let us say this is the game tree, this is game tree, here player 1 moves, this is one node which is initial node, this is another node, these two, these three are decision node. Net, let us represent them by x, y, z. And here we have e, f, g, h. Let us look in this game, x is initial node. What are the decision nodes? Here we have x, y, z are decision nodes and e f g h are terminal nodes. So, what do we say that successor node of a node let us say x are all the nodes that can be reached from x by progressing forward along a decision tree. So, here if we take x then y because y can be reached from x if game moves in this direction, we reach y. Similarly, we can also reach e from x. So, y, e, f because f can also be reached first this action and then the first action from here to here and then here we will reach to f. And similarly, z, g, h all these are successor nodes of x. We can take another example, if we are taking node z, then which are the successor nodes of node z? Let us look at it from z, if we move forward, then we reach to g and h. So, only g and h are the successor nodes. Similarly, we can define an immediate successor node. So, of course, when there is a node, a player get to move at that node. So, player can take one of the actions available to that particular node. So, once if the player takes that action, then a node, a node will be reached, 
that node will be immediate successor node. For example, for x here y this y and z are immediate successor node, while for z g and h are the immediate successor nodes and those are the only successor node for z. Then we can also define predecessor node if x no if a node a let us say if a node a is successor node of node b then node b is a predecessor node of node a. For example, if we take here z which would be the predecessor node. So, from x we can reach to z. So, x is predecessor node and similarly we can define immediate predecessor node. I have already given example. So, in game tree we have to keep three things in the mind. The first is that we should have only one initial node. For example, game should start game should have only one beginning. What do I mean by only one beginning? Let us take an example here a game is starting here let us say a player move here uh, player 1 moves and then player 2 gets to move and then we have here player 3 moves and again player 2 gets to move. So, this is not allowed this is not a game tree why because game is beginning at two different points. So, in game tree we have to have a unique initial node. So, this is not allowed. The second is that there is only one way to proceed. What do I mean by only one way to proceed? That from a you should notice in game tree all the nodes are connected to other nodes. What do I mean by connected? That if we can take series of branches from one node, we will always be able to reach any other node in that tree. So, in that sense game tree is connected. Only one way to proceed is that there should be only one path containing when I say path I mean series of branches there should be only one series of branches unique series of branches that should take from one node to another node. Let us take that example. Here player 1 moves then player 2 gets to move then player 3 gets to move and if I want to reach from node A which at which player 1 moves and to no this node C at which player C moves there should be only one path like this is the path to reach there. This is unique path there is no other path from node A to C in that sense what we should have only one way to proceed. The third thing that is a requirement is that there should not be any cycle in the game. In other word that each node except the initial node notice that initial node would not have any predecessor node because game is starting at the initial node. So, except initial node all other nodes would have unique immediate predecessor. So, let me show you an example where it is not true. Let us say this is a graph in which we have node A, B, C, D, E and also F, G, H. Let us look at node E. Node E has two immediate predecessor node which are C and D. So, this graph is not a game tree. So, these are three important things that we have to keep in mind when we are giving the game tree. Okay. Now, let us move to something called player function. We have already said I already told you in the last module that each node gets each decision node gets labeled by the player who would get to move. So, in other word what do we have? We have a player function a player a function which assigns each decision node to a player. 
What I want to emphasize that at one particular node only one player get to move. Okay? So, it is very very clear then if that node is reached which player will get to move. So, in a, in a word let us say if we have game tree a very simple game tree that I am drawing here let us say we have A, B, C, X, Y, Z and W. These are notice these are nodes. What are the decision nodes? Only A, B, C the set of decision nodes we have A, B and C. What this player function would do? This player function would assign each decision node to one unique player. So, we can say that at A we can say either one of the player gets to move let us say that one of the player is denoted by small i he gets to move and capital I denotes the set of all player. But remember we also introduced nature as one of the players nature can also make a move in this game. So, we should also allow for that nature the player who is going to move with this node is either one of the active players or nature. So, what it does it the player function would partition the set of decision node. For example, it is we can say here player 1 gets to move here player 2 gets to move. So, what we can say from here we get a set A indicating that at the all the nodes at which player 1 gets to move this is the set and all the nodes at which player 2 gets to move this is the set. So, here we get the partition just to remind you what do I mean by partition of a set what we are basically doing we are breaking a larger set into smaller sets in a very particular fashion such that when we take two smaller sets there is no common element in both of them and if we take all the smaller sets together then we recover the larger sets. So, let us see here if we, we have only two sets so we take this these two we do not have any common element and if we take union we get back the original set. So, this is player function. Now, let us come back to knowledge and to that I will talk about prisoner's dilemma and its variant. So, if you remember the prisoner's dilemma what was the prisoner's dilemma? There were two prisoners okay, and they move simultaneously. First question that I would like to answer can we model this prisoner's dilemma can we represent this prisoner's dilemma using game tree. Let me show you how let us say what do we move by simultaneously that when a player makes a move he or she is not aware of the actual action taken by all other players that is what simultaneous move means. So, here what is happening two prisoners they move they move simultaneously. So, when a pri prisoner is deciding his action he is not he knows what are the different actions the other player can take, but he does not know the actual action taken by the other player. So, how can we represent it using game tree? So, let us see we have here prisoner number 1 what he can do he can either confess or he does not confess. And let us take a variant in which prisoner 2 knows the actual move of prisoner 1. So, in that case it is very simple that prisoner 2 gets to move and here also prisoner 2 gets to move and he can take one of these two action C or D. Fine, coming back to the original prisoners dilemma their situation is different here it clearly indicates that when player 2 gets to move at this particular node he knows the prisoner 2 knows that prisoner 1 has already taken action C and at this node when prisoner 2 gets to move he already he knows this fact that prisoner 1 has already taken action D, but in actual prisoners dilemma that was discussed in the first week the prisoner 2 did not know the actual move. So, a very simple trick we can use to represent to bring this simultaneity that we will connect this with dotted line here player 1 moves takes action C or D 
player 2 gets to move here, but player 2 basically is not aware of the node that has reached in this game. Okay? So, player 2 takes one of these two action. So, there is a difference here, here this is not connected clearly indicating that player 2 knows that whether node let us say no, this node has reached or this node has reached. But in this case player 2 moves after player 1 has decided, player 1 has decided his actual move, but player 2 does not observe. So, player 2 knows that player 1 has decided, but player 2 is not able to distinguish between this node and this node. So, we connect it with a dotted line to indicate this lack of information, lack of knowledge that prisoner 2 has. Now, basically, so it is all about the level of knowledge. Here, prisoner 2 knows that prisoner 1 has taken action C. Here, prisoner 2 does not know that whether prisoner 1 has taken action C or D. He only knows that prisoner 1 has taken one of the action. And this is modeled using information set. Okay? So, what do we mean by an information set. An information set basically belongs to a particular player and contains decision node satisfying following criteria. These are the two criteria that we have to keep in mind. The player who gets to play or make a move at all the nodes in that information set. So, information set contains only those decision nodes at which the same player gets to make a move. And when a node that is the that is the first criteria, the second criteria is that when a node belonging to the information set is reached, the player does not know which node in the information set has reached. Okay? So, let us take this example again. Let us look at the prisoners once information set here. Let us call this let us call this uh, n 1 indicating node 1, this is n 2, this is n 3. Again here we have n 1, n 2 and n 3. For prisoner 1, it is clear n 1 in this game is information set for prisoner 1. In the second game also here let us say for the first, this is the first game, this is the second game first and here we have second game. Second also we have n 1. How about for player 2? Player 2, first criteria we have to see which are the nodes at which player 2 get to move n 2 and n 3, but that is only the criteria 1. How about the criteria 2? When a node belonging to the information set is reached, the player does not know which node in the information set has reached, but here there is only one. So, we can say when game reaches to n 2, player 2 knows that this node has reached. So, we can say n 2 is only one information set and n 3 oh sorry n 2 is one information set and n 3 is another information set. But how about for the second game? If game reaches here, player 2 is not able to distinguish between n 2 and n 3. So, using second criteria, we will have information set which will contain n 2 and n 3 both. Okay? So, further each decision node is in exactly one information set and at each decision node in an information set, the player must have the same set of feasible action and ultimately chooses the same action. Let me indicate these last two term in little bit more detail. Let us take an act uh, tree again. Let us consider a scenario here again we have n 2, we have n, n 1, n 2 and n 3. And here we have three actions x, y and z here we have a and b. First of all, what does the criteria say earlier that at each decision node in an information set the player must have 
same feasible sets, the same feasible actions. Let us look at it here. Here we have A and B, but here we have X, Y and Z. So, what do we get? If player sees that he has three action for, uh, at his disposal X, Y and Z, immediately he would infer that he is at N 2 and not an N 3. Then putting this dotted line would not make sense, because this dotted line indicates that player 2 is not able to distinguish between nod 2 and nod 3. So, when we have a dotted line, we cannot have situation like this, that one place we have x, y and z as actions available and at other place we have a and b as actions available. Both the places we should have same, otherwise the player would understand which node has reached. So, this is what we get a and b. The next thing it says that player ultimately chooses the same action that I cannot exactly show you, but let me tell you, because player does not know the player who gets to move at n 2 or n 3, he does not know whether the node that has reached is n 2 or n 3, he would decide irrespective of the fact whether he is at n 2 or n 3, he would only take into account that he is at one of these two nodes. So, he will take the same action whether he is at actually reached at n 2 or at n 3. Okay. Now, we had talked about common knowledge. What does the common knowledge here? Common knowledge says that players know the game's structure. Okay? But then we are we should distinguish between perfect information and imperfect information. What is perfect information? That players when making any decision know of all the events that has previously occurred. Okay? So, he is aware. So, let us go back to the example that we had earlier. Let us look it into first game. When player 2 is moving at n 2, he knows all the events that has previously occurred. That player 1 has moved and he has taken action c or if he has reached to node n 3, he knows that player 1 has moved and taken action d. But let us look at in the other game. When player 2 gets to move, he is not actually aware of all the previous moves. When player is at n 2, he does not know whether player 1 has taken action c or action d or even when player 2 is at n 3, he does not know whether player 1 has taken action c or d. So, these are the two different situation that we are discussing. One is called perfect information, when player knows all the events that has previously occurred. An imperfect information when player does is not perfectly informed in the sense that he may not know all or some of the events that have already occurred. One way to figure out how a game is of perfect information, when all the information set is singleton, it means all the information set contains only one node. If at least one of the information set is not singleton, then we say game is of imperfect information. That is it for this module. In the next module, we are going to talk about strategies. Thank you.